notes. Yeah, open up the notes, Tom, because we are live, buddy. Oh, shit. We're Episode live. 70. We are not back on track. Uh, the world is still a mess. But, so are we. <laughs> but your boys are here. Um, episode 70, Rude Boys Power Plus. Welcome. I'm Sherm. I'm Tom. Okay. A uh, little bit of delay. We but got that. We, we got that through. We got that through. <laughs> oh, man. And it is it is the eve. The eve of Batman. Our month of Batman stuff. Coming up. We got three episodes. Maybe more. Yeah. Who knows? Um, we'll talk about that later in the episode. But we are gearing up for Batman. Um, and what that entails, we're going to talk about a little later. But right now, Tommy, who's that in your mouth? Who is in my delicious mouth? Yeah, you're going to you have to describe it because I can't see it. Yeah. It is from this little company called Poland Springs, oh, established in 1845, born in Maine, 100% natural spring water. Yeah, very very I'm nice. Drinking water right now. All right, that's fine. You you were doing some drinking some, last night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The four shots of Jameson and uh, another six shots of Screwball whiskey. You took shots of that? Yeah. Um, I filled the I, I like I filled up three double uh three double shot glasses. <laughs> oh okay. So, All right. That equals to six. Yep. If my numbers are correct. No, you're good. I'm no mathematician like you. The math checks out. I don't know what you're getting at. I don't know either. Yeah. But now here... Who's in your mouth, There we go. I got some uh, some coffee going on. I got some Clan Clan McGregor whiskey, Irish whiskey, uh, which is the cheap. You know it's it's real good liquor when it comes in a plastic bottle. So... Well, that's that's like Admiral Nelson, man. Yeah. It's a matter of just... Honestly, it's quantity versus honestly, quality. I mean, quantity versus quality. Much honestly, like this episode. Man, not yeah. gonna lie, Admiral Nelson sometimes has a little more of a kick than uh, Captain Morgan. Yeah, probably because they don't wash the fucking tools when they when okay, they fine. when they mix the booze. I don't know. Good. They Give gotta. Me that trash. They gotta. They gotta cut costs somewhere, man. Exactly. Uh, but in addition, there's some Molly's Irish Cream again, plastic bottle. Um, All right. Yeah, just you know, doing great, man. Non-essential living, unemployment. Whoo, days just <laughs> blend into weeks, into months now. It's great. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> I'm slightly jealous, but at the same time, I'm not. Yeah, no. It 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 goes back and forth. Let me tell you. Uh, I know. It, it, it's like a I'm little, sure. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure you're jealous of me some days. I mean, I'm well. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, I, I, <laughs> You've never been jealous of me. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> you want to clink it up, Tommy? Virtual clink. Sorry. Virtual clink yeah. and cut it up. Ready? There we go. Uh, uh. There we go. There we go. Mm. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. Tom, if anyone has a has a reason to drink, it's you because you have to work all the time. I know. But you also don't well, need I, a reason I, to drink because that really just leads to alcoholism. So here's a little secret: I've been drinking at work. Oh. <laughs> there may be a bottle in the bottom drawer. My man, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, right. And we know nobody. Is rather happy. And we know nobody listens, so it's fine. Uh, that's not true. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Tommy, let's move it all, all into Blitzkrieg. Woo, Blitzkrieg! Blitzkrieg, Tom. Hit it. All right, starting off in games, as we always do, and like, Tom's not going to fuck it up. WWE 2K21 canceled in favor of a new style WWE game. Yep. So, Nation, by the time you hear I'm about... okay with this? Yeah, no, same, same. I, I think every so often annual video game franchises need a break um, because, you know, they wipe their fucking team out, you know, creatively and, uh-huh. and technically and, and physically. So, you know, also fucking unionize. But 
the um the 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 two K series has been going on. I, I think pretty much rock steady, rock hard since probably fucking some of the early SmackDown games. Uh, for the like the PlayStation One, like I think just once a year, every year, every year, and then once Two K bought it, it's been the same the same bullshit. There've been little you know side steps here and there, like with the um, Legends of WrestleMania and All Stars and shit. But this is going to be the first year we are not getting an annualized WWE game. Um, but Nation, as per recording this Monday, uh, which you've already heard, presumably Two uh, K is going to announce what is going on. I guess this year or next for their wrestling games. So we're gonna find out together, uh, and this is gonna be old. Maybe I'll edit something in. I don't know, but basically, what what it comes down to is two K one, two K twenty one. I'm sorry, is not gonna be happening. Good. Yeah, Good. especially with the fucking debacle two K twenty was. Oh my god, two K twenty was was horrible. It was so bad. Um, let's let's keep moving right into debacles. Oh uh, well, I was gonna say uh, because it, well, no, because it, it, it says in favor of a new style. Watch, they're gonna see how that uh, Retro Studios game does and try to, and try to do a WWE game in that style. Possibly because because fucking their WWE is scum. Well, I mean, scum. Listen, they we're don't have much of a the, say. We're, 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 we're gonna be getting to the scummery. Yeah, there, there's in more WWE bit. scum to, to be said. Oh, and there's say. a lot of scum that pissed me off this week. Oh, right. We're moving along? Yep. Moving along. The hilarious cooking mama controversy. Chris, would you be so kind and enlighten those who are not familiar with this controversy? Absolutely, Tom. I.e., your co-host. Absolutely, Tom. So, uh, Cooking Mama was this is this video game franchise that... Uh, it came out during the DS era. It was, uh, you know, like like one of those like goofy cartoon style simulation games um, in the same vein as like you know like uh, Trauma Center for doctors. This thing was for cooking, so you know using right, right, using the yeah. stylus and the touchscreen and shit like that. It's a very popular franchise. Like it sold many millions of copies throughout all of the games, and there was a new game coming out called Cookstar. Um, okay. So. Uh, completely, like, uh, no fanfare or anything when it got announced, and like, oh, there's a new Cooking Mama game, great, okay, cool. Um, and then immediately it came out, so without any sort of fanfare, like I said, or announcement, um, and then people started looking into it, um, because then the, uh, eShop listing, because it came out on the Nintendo Switch, the eShop listing disappeared. So people were like, hmm, that's weird, what's going on here? People looked into it, people data mined it, and, um, the rumor initially, was that the game was used to data mine... Was, I'm sorry, was used to mine uh, cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin and shit like that, using the power of the Nintendo Switch. Um, which was debunked, and that actually was uh, from like an old press release that... Uh, some sort of thing, I don't know. Um, and, but then people were saying that it got pulled because it wasn't optimized for the Switch and it would just cause overheating or something like that, like la 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 la. Turns out that the uh, IP holder for Cooking Mama, uh, which memory escapes me, I, I apologize, but basically it comes down to the IP holder for Cooking Mama had an agreement with the developers of this game, uh, but the developers just went along and published the games themselves. So this game is in some sort of weird limbo where uh, the people who really own the game uh, don't want it to be out because it's not up to their standards, and the people who made the game just put it out and they think they have the right to make it. So uh, it's just this weird, confusing back and forth because it's a lot of... uh, The whole thing with the cryptocurrency and, and just like this popular franchise just not coming out, like, just so very weird. Huh. Um, but needless to say, if you can get a physical copy, like I did, it might be worth a lot someday. So, just keep that in mind, Nation. Actually, no, don't buy anything, Nation. Just let, let it ride, baby. That was enlightening. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm sure. And we're all smarter <laughs> and more well-off for knowing that. Uh, but there's a lot of videos out online. Um, there's this one cat who I follow on YouTube, Matt McMuscles. Um, he does a uh, YouTube series called What Happened? Or, like, What Happened? Uh, really, right, yeah, yeah. really in-depth reporting as far as 
um, games that kind of came out and bombed or just have a really troubled development history. And he did Star. one for Cooking Mama Cookstar, the, this game in particular. Uh, and he's, he's very funny, too. Very good. Um, I would recommend you guys check that out. If you want more information. Which I know none of you did. I got more information than I wanted. Right, sorry. On, uh, on what was a silly game, from what it sounds like. Alright, what else is in gaming, Tom? Crisis Remastered and Jump Force coming to Switch. Yep, so uh, Crisis is a uh, U- Ubisoft first-person shooter. Way ahead of its time when it came out. Uh, I don't know what the big deal is. I think it just looks pretty. Um, but yeah. that's coming to Switch. That's actually coming to all consoles. Uh, obviously, when, when games still come out to Switch, it's still like uh, remarkable. Uh, and Jump Force, uh, that was the uh, Shohan Jump mashup fighting game that came out Christ yeah. last year, I believe. Uh, you know, with Goku uh, and Luffy and Naruto yeah, and yeah, Kool Aid Man and Big Bird and uh, yes, Big Bird was in there. Yep, yep you're the, the, absolutely the cook- right. The Cookie Crisp dog, the burglar uh, version, not the new one. So yeah, Jump Force and uh, Crisis coming to the Switch. Yep. Uh, Jump Force, I was interested in. Yes. Whether yeah. When I, when I saw up, that I news, know. when I saw that news, I texted you because I knew yeah, you were interested. I do. In it. Yeah, I do want to get a new. Uh, I, I mean, I've been itching for a new fighting game. Well, you might be in luck. I just, huh? I just don't know if Jump Force is for me. I want to see if they're gonna drop a demo. Okay. I mean, check check the consoles you have now to see if there's a demo. Know what I mean? Yeah. True. True, true, true. Uh, or just also, tell your brother to buy it. Yeah, right? No, because if I do that, I'm going to have to play Animal Crossing. Ah, good point. Um, Got a question for you, though. Yeah, go uh, ahead, Tom. Did you... I, and I heard this this week. I can't remember if we've covered it. Is uh, uh, Switch units are very low right now. Yeah, we talked about it last episode. Like, we did. Okay, cool. Yep. Then I'm gonna move along to comics. All right. Well, I mean, I, I guess I actually, actually, uh, an update on that is um, okay. they're they're doubling down on producing more. So there you okay. go. Just in case, because I know the nation was worried. Sure. So comic news. Comic news. Uh, I was hearing that uh, DC is uh, going th- trying to go through a different distributor to get comics into stores. I think I heard that uh, also. Good luck yeah, to him. I mean, there's there's not a lot of info on it, so you know, I you know, as I get more information, maybe I'll post it up on Twitter and, and such. You can't see the face I'm gonna make, but come on, he'll what? try, Nation. He'll try to put that up. <laughs> hey, I'm the Instagram guy. Shut up. Okay. Moving on. You're the Twitter. You're the Twitter guy. I don't want to hear shit from you, mother fluffer. So moving on to movies, Bruce Campbell to be in Mallrats sequel. This is pretty cool. Um, I heard that uh, Kevin Smith is uh, pretty much done with the Mallrats sequel. Uh, what do you mean by done? Been, like uh, just like he's, his uh, part? D- done writing it. Done writing. Oh, okay, it. gotcha, gotcha. Obvi- I, 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 obviously not. Uh, you know. Not filming it, right? Because you know, being in quarantine, I guess all these writers and directors can actually get shit done now. Yeah, good for them. Uh, speaking of Bruce Campbell, something that I would really like to see in uh. future MCU movies, uh huh, is all right. We all love Mr. Stanley. Yes, but let's have Bruce Campbell start doing like those cameos now. I think that'd be really cool. I'm okay with that. Like, Right? <laughs> like, I know people uh, People were saying, like, um, get, like, Deadpool or something to just... Eh, I, I know your Bruce thoughts, Campbell. but, you know, he's he's a character in-universe that would just kind of pop in and out of, you know, people's stories. Bruce All right, fine. Bruce Campbell. Moving on. So, yeah, more Rise sequel coming. Awesome. Can't wait. Did enjoy Jay and Silent Bob reboot, and yes, Chris, I can feel your goddamn eye rolls. I'm just not even paying attention. Yeah, I know. It, it was kind of like me with, you know, when you were talking about Cooking Mama. Cooking Mama, right, okay, okay. Yeah. That's fine. All right. Oh, all right. DCEU always copying the MCU movies. 
Yes. So um, there's some DC EU uh, delays shuffling. happening. Shuffling is a, is a real good way to put it. So yeah, the updated DC EU up uh, dates uh -huh. um, as uh, of right now, as per recording, uh, Wonder uh -huh. Woman eighty four, the eighty fourth Wonder Woman movie, August fourteenth. Uh, okay. The Suicide Squad, August 6th, 2021. Okay. Uh, the Batman, that's the Matt Reeves, uh, Robert Pattinson, new Batman movie. Okay. October 1st, 2021, which um, Matt Reeves has gone on to say that the October slash Halloween theme will fit this movie. So people are saying maybe like a long Halloween or something like that might pull from that. Who knows? Which is all right. Seeing with all those villains that... Uh, he's putting it in, it, it'll work. Right, right. Um, Black Adam, December 22nd, 2021. The, right. the Flash, June 3rd, 2022. Shazam 2, November 4th, 2022. Oh. And Aquaman 2, December 16th, 2022. Wow. So, obviously things got bumped because of the current conditions, the current climate of the world. Um... Yeah, uh, but they're still moving. The gears are moving. They're moving uh -huh. a little slower, but they're still in the move. Okay, so that's DCU. Oh, right. wait, but now Sony has also moved Venom. Yep, so Sony moved Venom. Sony also gave us a subtitle, uh, Let There Be Carnage. That is yeah. the subtitle for... <laughs> that is the subtitle for the Venom sequel, um, and it was... Bumped from October 2nd, 2020, this year, to uh -huh. June 25th, 2021. So, okay. um, uh, Sony is obviously pushing their stuff. They also pushed back into the Spider-Verse 2, which okay. I have uh, right here in front of me. October 7th, oh, October 7th, wow. tw October 7th, 2022. Okay. So, that's... Yes, Into the Spider-Verse 2. And now there's no more delays, right, Tom? Oh, fuck no. There's some more MCU delays. What? Oh, God. I don't know, Chris. Do you have these up? I do have them up. So, um... Holy shit. Spider-Man 3 got shuffled over to November 5th, 2021. And Doctor Strange 2, uh, a.k.a. Uh, the Multiverse of Madness, got pushed uh -huh. to March 25th, 2022. Um, yep. So, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Just going to have yep. to deal with it. It's pretty much going to be a uh, an ongoing feature of... Just put it all on like Disney Plus. <laughs> put it all on Disney Plus. <laughs> Tom, I know that's, that's good I for you, but that's, they're not going to make the billions that they want to make. Oh, look at the fucks I give. All right, that's good. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Uh, moving along yes. to TV... All right, TV news. Final, se final season of Agents of Shield will pre premiere May twenty seventh. Right. Um, you been up on this, Tom? Like you caught your your caught up with uh, uh, all your Agents of Shield? No, I think I gotta do. I think they just put season six up on Netflix. Um, but yeah, so. they're ra they're wrapping it up. Um, okay. What's gonna happen with these characters or Agents of Shield as a whole? I don't know. Maybe they'll get moved into the. Um, the MCU slash DC, um, sorry, Disney Plus portion of um, sure. the the shows. I don't know. I don't know. That'd be I don't cool. know. Nobody knows. Moving along. Okay. The Mandal um, Mandalorian documentary series and Clone Wars finale coming May fourth. Yes. Yeah, so uh, there's a uh, a short form documentary series, uh, almost like a roundtable discussion of a lot of the creative people from Mandalorian. Uh, that is going to premiere on May the 4th. In addition to May the 4th, you also have the last episode of Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Because uh, they bumped it up to match up with the 4th of May. Um, yes. Also... Really? That's why they did it? Yeah, really? Get that Star Wars hype, guy. Damn right. You'll probably get... I'm, I'd imagine you'd get a trailer for maybe Season 2 of The Mandalorian. Because that's still to be on sure. track. Yeah, Mandalorian is uh, coming out in October. Something like that, later in the year. Yeah. Um, and I also believe um, Season 3 is starting pre-production, which, I mean, honestly, that means people just talking about it. I know people have said that John Favreau has written a lot 
of uh, the Mandalorian stories uh, going forward. So he, he, there's probably something already in the in the works. I mean, there is something right. in the works. They just confirmed it. But Nation, you will hear from us because uh, that will be in between episodes uh, about May the Fourth stuff. Uh, so we're gonna take a little break on Batman and talk about Star Wars. But <sighs> how dare us? I know it's big. It's big news. Big news. It is. It is. It is. Alright, another Star Wars show in production. Uh, yes, okay. Yep, um, and this one um, this one got a little confusing when it got released uh, in the news sites. So, uh, from what I gather, it, it's going to be a, uh, a female-casted Star Wars show. Yes. And a lot of the phrasing they use is that it's going to be in an alternate timeline. Some people have said that means, like, an alternate universe. Honestly, I think it just means it has nothing to do with the Skywalker saga. Like, whereas right. The Mandalorian fit in between um, episode 6 and 7, uh, I believe. And obviously all the other movies and TV shows kind of bounced in that. Um, could it be High Republic? I don't know. Could it just be something completely devoid of the Star Wars universe that we know? Hopefully, because that's exciting. Sure. Um, but, you know, we'll probably get a little bit of hint on that. At, um, uh, not Celebration, May the 4th, I'm sorry. Celebration, I think, comes out later in the year. If it's not canceled, I don't know. Fuck, see? Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's on you, buddy. It really fucking is. Uh, the Rock producing an HBO show about yard parts? Yeah, yard parts. <laughs> so, Backyard Wrestlers, uh, as they're uh, oh. colloquially known as. Um, oh, yeah, really? I've never heard that. No, you never have? Uh-uh. Yard tards. That's a shout out to all my yard tards. I I was a yard tard. Uh, <laughs> I'm you still saw a tard. Well, yeah. I just you know, <laughs> I sold out, brother. I left the yard. <laughs> nah, you bought in. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm still the 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 reigning uh, HWF New York Metropolitan Champion. Huh? Co-as, so it uh, seems like you ne- insomnia. Seems like you never- Seems like you never defend your uh, titles. Listen, bitch, I booked myself strong, okay? I'm sorry. Come on, creative control clause, bitch. Relax, Kevin Nash. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so so The Rock is, is producing a Holly, uh, uh, HBO Hollywood box office television show about um, some dude who wrestles in the backyard. I don't know. I feel like you really need, like, a 90s look to this. You can't just have, like... You know, because I know, like, the Hardy Boys got their start jumping on trampolines. The right. same thing with the Young Bucks. Um, y- y- you really need a certain aesthetic. You can't just be like, yeah, it's 2020. I'm going to do backyard wrestling. Like, I-, I don't think that's really a thing anymore. It's probably, like, backyard MMA or, I don't know, basement sure. fighting or some shit. I don't know. But you need, you- I feel like you need that 90s attitude era. Like, let's just hit each other with fucking chairs, who cares, like, you know. Sure, sure. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's cool that, um, you know, The Rock still, you know, tips the hat to um, his his past. and Where, uh, he, has where he started? It, where he started, exactly, yeah. And I know he, yeah. he actually got um, inducted in a, um, like a, like, a wrestling club, weird to say, and completely devoid of anything, but, like, uh, it's good that he, you know, he accepted that. He's, you know, um, living from it because... You know, he's probably one of the biggest success stories um, to come out of wrestling um, sure. and to still give back to that community. Sure. Um, even like I know, Tom, we saw when we were um, on my birthday, The Rock had a video shout out to Triple H, who hit 25 yeah. years in um, in the business, in the business. Uh, and that's cool because, you know, they were fucking running the roads the same amount of time. They pretty much kind of came up similarly together within maybe like one or two years um and they've had hell of rivalries man for the ic championship for the wwe championship but obviously yeah, the rock yeah, no, totally. the rock was able to break that orbit and keep on going yeah uh, another thing the rock did uh did, did you ever watch uh fighting with my family or no no but he produced that right yeah and he was in it mm. um i remember seeing that clip yeah I think it's on Amazon Prime. You should uh, check it out. It's pretty good. All right. Yeah, not. Nah. Yeah, we'll see. You won't watch it. I don't know. Animal Crossing's taking, taking control. Huh? I said Animal what? Crossing's taking control. I don't know. You just put it on the background. It's a movie about wrestling. Do 
you really need full brain function for that? Nah, I guess I really don't. I don't need full bro- brain function for... Brain function for this shit. That's true, too, yeah. Uh-huh. You got me there, Tommy. Moving along, and to me, this is uh, probably the best news on Blitzkrieg. New Parks and Rec special coming April 30th. Yep, that's... I cannot wait. That is this week, as per posting. I hate thinking it's streaming the next day, but that's, that's yep. pretty fucking cool. Um... So you and got they're all going to be doing it from their homes and such. Yeah, I'm curious on how I'm curious how they'll wrap that up into um I guess the plot. They'll probably just do yeah. like a, you know, like hey, the 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 office is shut down, so we're all, you know, telecommuting or something like that. But right. yeah. um yeah, I am I'm, I'm excited for that. Hope it's good. No, I can't. Um yeah. yeah, same. I'm sure it will be. Like I mean, what I think about the parks and rec, like like parks and rec because I'm looking at the box set right now, I don't really think there was a stinker of the season. Uh, season one. Season one was where they were, you know, they were getting their feet wet. Right, so if so, I had to say there was a stinker, it would be season one. But, but no, when I say, like, a stinker, I mean, like, the last season of, like, How, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, okay. Or, oh, so, so, so you, you're giving them a pass for season one because it's their first season. But then you right. think, all right, that okay, I, I can, I, I can, I can agree to that. You know, so like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. season one, they were getting their feet wet, so yeah. that's why I don't say all it's right. a complete stinker. Okay, I got you, thank, I got you. Thank, thank you for agreeing with me. Yes. And not fighting me. I know, it's a weird feeling, right? <laughs> I'm not used to it. <laughs> it's a fucking trap. It's a trap. All right, moving on to wrestling. Here we go. Cuts and cuts and cuts and cuts and fucking cuts in WWE. Yes, 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 so yes. So when they <coughs> when they come out when they come out with a new game, the roster is going to be what five people. It, well, I mean, you know, they they always got those legend contracts in. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So. Um, whew, I I feel like we can't talk about um the cuts without talking about um the state of the WWE right now. So, uh-huh. and the state of the world, really. It all comes down to this. So, th- so this, sure. is, uh, this is after WrestleMania. This is... Uh, WrestleMania cuts aren't a new thing. Uh, we'll just say that, okay? Nope. I'm, not, I'm, nope. not, I'm not absolving anybody of anyone's sins or anything like that. I'm just saying it happens. You know, they like to get their payday in, and then it's like, you know, here's a, here's a pat on the back, you're, bye-bye, and move on. Whatever. What's scummy about this is that with the uh, current situation of the world and everything like that, the WWE was deemed a essential media in the state of Florida. Right. That uh, due to Vince McMahon well, uh, digging up loopholes and such. Well, yeah. Well, it, not necessarily loopholes, but it, it's definitely it, it definitely goes into the politics of it because obviously Vince Vince's wife uh, is part of the Small Business Association uh, for the White House and runs a Republican super PAC. So money is you know. T- uh, you know, p- passing hands and, and, and shit like sure. that. It's shady. It's absolutely sure. shady. Tom, yep. it's carny as fuck. But that Much doesn't like make the it... the politics of the world right well, very now, true. the United States right now. But that doesn't make it any less shady. No. So a no. lot of shadiness. A lot of like, oh, we can run live shows because we're essential media and the world needs right. us. The world needs a distraction. Blah, 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 blah. There's no reason why you can't just record shows, uh, uh, pre-tape them, and then just do some sort of live compilation, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, but now they don't have to do that <sighs> because they pulled a net profit. I don't know. Again... It, what what really comes what really it comes down to is um the talent and the creativity behind the people who were released um and that sucks and it's it's a big cut too it's not just a handful of people it's like it, almost no. a dozen people if i if i remember correctly i got the list right in front of me yeah. um so i mean we got names i'm going to go through the names real quick tommy okay all right uh drake maverick who uh-huh. 
is still part of the Cruiserweight tournament, so you will still see him on, I believe, NXT or maybe 205 Live. I don't know the, the details of that. I think just on NXT. Um, right. Carl Anderson and Luke... Lost. Right, well, so, okay, so, sidebar, the way that the Cruiserweight tournament is going, it's almost like um, you have uh, two groups of people, uh, two groups of four wrestlers, and the best out of those groups move on. Um, right, between win, right. wins and losses. So just the fact that he lost, he's still going to show up probably on NXT. I don't know how that really is going, but he's still there. Um, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, who just were in um, the Boneyard match of uh, uh -huh. WrestleMania and, you know, highly um, advertised. Uh, Leo Rush, former Cruiserweight champion. EC3, who, I mean, uh, he had a string of injuries, so, you know, that sucks. Uh, but I, I mean, mean, I mean, he was. A, I mean, I, I, I've always looked at him as a dud anyway. You know what? I liked him. Um, he had a shine of creativity when he was in the um, the pre NXT NXT uh, as Derek Bateman, um, and especially when he was over on Impact as, as EC, EC3. Um, yeah. I thought he had a way of uh, owning his character, and it, it was just very. Sure. It, it resonated with me. Honestly, I think them getting him, it was just a, a fuck you to TNA. That's really what I, I think it comes down to. Um, and then he, I mean, he was barely used in NXT uh, as EC3, and he was barely used on Raw or anything like that. Uh, Kurt Hawkins, uh, who is unfortunately no stranger to cuts like these, and Zack Ryder. Yeah, that I saw, and I was like, wow. Zack okay. Ryder was like a fucking lifer, man. Uh, and it's a shame, it like, but. He, when, when JTG got let go, he was the new JTG. <laughs> You're right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, speaking of the new JTG, Heath Slater also got cut. I feel like yeah. he, he was definitely a person that they, they could have relied upon uh, just for, like, I don't know. I mean, it's it's weird times. Like, I mean, you can't, like, resonate with the crowd when there's no crowd. So, yeah. you, you know, it, it's tough and it, it's weird. And, again, it's unfortunate that these guys are getting uh, let go in this climate because they can't go out to the independents right now and try to make a buck. Uh-huh. They can't do anything like I that. I mean, I mean, it really sucks with Heath Slater. I feel like they missed the mark where they could have had, like, you know, something with him and Drew and Jinder. And, oh, I agree, you know. I agree. Um, Instead, hey, let's just put Seth Rollins back in the title. Well, uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of a legit main eventer. Um, uh, Eric Young boring. released. Um, yep. Again, yeah, we, I feel like again, he's just a... Another, I, another, another impact fuck you. Yeah, I think it was just a scoop up just to scoop it up. Yep. I mean, don't get me wrong, great, yep. great wrestler, creative, um, could could do comedy face and uh, evil heel, Mike, you know, yep. very well done. San Sandy was a great group. Sandy was great. I thought fucking like the little bit of like Super Eric or whatever in TNA was enjoyable. All right, so who else got let go? Let's keep this blitz. All right, shut up. Shut up, bitch. Uh, Kurt Angle, Hall of Famer, bye. Uh, he was apparently in, like, production at the time. Uh, Aiden English, who kind of transitioned to commentator for 205 Live uh, and really seemed passionate about that product. Uh, got let go. Sorry, yeah. Aiden. Uh, Sarah Logan, who just had a match on that Raw, uh -huh. got let go. And they were mentioning him... Uh, I'm sorry, wow. Mentioning her on... Um, the uh, follow-up episode of Raw after she was let go, so whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Primo and Epico, who haven't been seen in years, so whatever. Uh, yeah, I honestly thought they got let go a while ago. Yeah. Uh, Eric Rowan, a.k.a. Rowan, right. a.k.a. the guy who had a cage and, like, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Mike and Maria Kanellis. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, the the Mike, Mike Kanellis, that, that's uh, unfortunate because I know, like, I think it was last year he wanted his release because he wasn't happy. They kind of slotted him into the 205, you know, main event, if that's even really a thing. But, you know, he seemed like right. he was uh, turning it around. Uh, and, Marie, and they just had another kid, so sorry, guys. Uh, no Way yep. Jose, which, okay, whatever. Um, Thank God. I feel like that was not really a, a character that would have had a long shelf life. Despite yeah, the fact they like tried it, rose. exactly. Uh, Rusev, that was a that was a sad one, but I mean, yeah. you know, he, he Rusev, I I always thought was a uh, a bit of a shining star, and in the same sense with like Zack Ryder, like they got themselves over 
despite the office not winning them over. Like Zack Ryder had his yeah. YouTube show and he had his, you know, his, his almost his grassroots, like, you know, we want Ryder a chance at fucking Survivor Series when The Rock was there in Madison Square yeah. Garden. Uh, the same thing with yeah. Rusev, all the fucking bullshit storylines you gave Rusev, whether that be the Bobby Lashley and Lana thing or even a couple years ago with um, Dolph Ziggler and Summer Rae, he made work. Because yeah. he was just out there and he was hungry. He was creative. He 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 did his he he did it. Um, but I you know I, I hope uh, he gets picked up. He probably will get picked up someplace. Probably AEW. Um, and then also um, uh, we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna talk about AEW uh, real quick after you, once you finish this long list of fireies. I know, and it, it's a shame. Uh, also, the last one we're gonna end with is uh, Mike Kyoto, senior referee Mike Kyoto. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't get that. Like, of, right. all, of, of all the referees, right? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I, so uh, I've seen people on Twitter being like, "Why don't you just release a bunch of NXT people who got?" I mean, don't get me wrong, NXT people did get released. These are the more well-known names. Um, th- those contracts, though, are uh, a pittance to what these guys are making because they've been, you know, in the company for o- almost a decade. I'd say for some of these, like a like a Heath Slater or a Zack Ryder, but. Yep. You know, they're making more year-to-year than someone who hasn't even debuted on NXT TV and just doing, like, the house show circuits, uh, which <laughs> there's no house shows, so, you know, you're losing right, that exactly. out. Um, but, you know, heart goes out to a lot of these guys. Um, they're super creative, super good. N- no, you know, they'll turn it all around. Um, and I hope really the only thing they got going against them is not the... Not, not the hindrance of being a WWE guy or girl or um, the hindrance of uh, the, their lifestyle or whomever they are because these guys are and girls are all self-motivated, uh, is the world. They just can't get work. Um, I know Zack Ryder and Heath Slater have all gotten into just selling their merch, uh, and it's been working because it's getting their name out, and they know it. The same thing with The Revival, who we talked about last episode. Or I guess they're called yep. the the uh, the revolt or something like that. Now I, who knows? They haven't done any sort of big announcement. Can't wait for them to show up on AEW. They hundred percent will. If I mean again, mm-hmm. if honestly, if shows were running normally, they'd probably do a little bit of an independent run here and there. Sure. They might show up and then they would they would land in AEW. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was a long bit. Um, one of the things I saw with uh, Zach, uh, Zach Ryder getting released, someone on Twitter was just like, all right, so I want AEW to pick up Zach Ryder so this way him and Cody could become uh, a tag team called The Sweet Life of Zach, uh, of Zach and Cody. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And then, and then take over the Jericho crew so they could be Zach and Cody on deck. Oh, my God. <laughs> And I was like, you know what? Yes. Give me all of that. That's a reference even I don't get, Tom. You're a lot more youthful it, than I. It was a Nickelodeon show. Right. right, right okay. Uh, do you get it now? Yeah, I get it now. Thanks. Moving on. Yeah. Moving Keep on. Uh, R.I.P. Howard Finkel. Yeah, so we, we got to talk about this. This is it came right after the cuts. Uh, man. Uh, when Vince cuts <clears> people, <throat> Oh, stop! Stop it! Uh, to the grave! Wow! All right. Uh, uh, my co-host. Sober Tom. Yeah, my co-host. Uh, it's a weeps, prank. weeps for the Finkel family. Um, clearly. Uh, but no, that 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 sucks, man. He was he was a hundred percent a lifer. We just talked about him on the WrestleMania episode of um, the uh, Russell special we just did, and. He was a lifer. He was the first WWE employee. And, uh, I mean, it wasn't used for a while, um, possibly because of his um, deteriorating health. But, man, the voice of a era, I would say. Yeah. Just the whole, sure. you know, and new, you know, like, the, just how he said it with gusto, with, uh-huh. yeah, just uh, R.I.P. Howard Finkel, rest in power. Rest in power. All right, so what else we got, Tony Blitzkrieg? We're not even going to end Blitzkrieg on a... Oh, no, we're going to end it on a 
shit note. Right. Uh, and it's Central News, San Diego Comic Con, officially canceled this year. Yes. Um, which is the first time in 50 years uh, there won't be a San Diego Comic Con. Yep. So, uh, yeah, this is going to put a lot of. Because um, obviously, Comic Con has evolved into more things than just comics. And uh-huh. this is putting a lot of things in flux as far as like what movies get announced or trailers come out. Um, obviously, there's nothing stopping that. With the um, with the cancellation of E3, uh, it's kind of similar because E3 was a weekend of actually a week of people you know coming together and just announcing their new shit. And there's nothing stopping that, but there's also nothing really keeping that construct together, you know what I mean? So, like, it's not being, it's not trying to coordinate. Um, I feel like a lot of these people probably planned ahead and were like, okay, so, Tom, when's Comic-Con again? Is it the end of the summer? Uh, it's usually July or August. Okay, so I'm sure people like Marvel Studios or um, Warner Brothers, they were like, okay, for San Diego Comic-Con... We're going to release or announce these trailers or these shows or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, I feel like they're just going to do it anyway in that same time period. But we're, we're going to see what happens. I think um, when E3 rolls around, we'll probably see how that um, template migrates into just the fucking wild world of the internet. And if Nintendo's just going to do Nintendo Directs or, you know... the. Microsoft do their state of play or whomever does the fuck on that. I don't know. I'm just breaking. Uh, so yeah, San Diego Comic Con. No San Diego Comic Con. So that is all we have for Blitzkrieg. All right, Tom, uh, let's catch up, buddy. I know we just saw each other for the live episode of the Rude Boys Party Cast. Uh, thank you, nobody, for joining us, but download it, and um, you're going to get more live episodes in the future. But for now, Tommy, what you been up to? I, uh, I mean, just the usual shit that, uh, you know, the state of the world that we're in. Uh-huh. Uh, but last week I did watch... Um, this is what we call the I Kill Giants. Okay. It's about this. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's about this uh, girl. She, you know, it, her way of dealing with like the trauma in her life. Okay. She's like you know hunting giants and such, um, setting traps, and apparently there really are giants. So that's pretty good. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, it was you know it was a cute story. Okay. Where did you um? um where did you watch it again? On Amazon. Amazon, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And then the next one that I watched, which apparently got a lot of, you know, it got a lot of, like, you know, Oscar stuff, and you know, was uh, The Lighthouse. Right, right, right. That movie fucking sucked. I don't know what the hell anyone's <laughs> talking about. It's fucking William Dafoe and Robert Pattinson fighting each other and fighting a seagull and... That movie fucking sucked. Like, wow. like, it just was not good. Like, it's like, dude, I understand. The, the dude who directed it, he did The Witch. Okay, right. So, if you ever watched that, you already know how it's gonna be. A <laughs> slow, boring shit burn. That's pretty much what it's gonna be. Okay. If anyone, if anyone hasn't watched it, I don't recommend it. Don't watch it. Wow. All right, Tommy. Tommy, hot take over here. Damn right. All right. What have you been up to, my friend? Um. Well, while well, we'll transition into that, um, Clone Wars, Tom. Did you see the last episode of Clone Wars? Ooh, yes, I have. Let's talk about this. Um, so we only have, as per recording, two more episodes of the Clone Wars oh. final season. I know. I kind of want them all right now. That's how I've been consuming Clone Wars. Um, but we are halfway yeah. in the last arc of the last season, which is the Siege of Mandalore. And god damn, it's so good. It really is. It really man. is. Like this, the last two episodes have just been so good. Yes, uh, I think so the, the Siege of Mandalore good. stuff is so good. And I think what, what really helps that it's so good is it's 
I don't want to say reliance, but like it's like hand in handness with episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Yes. Um, because you have things that are happening concurrently, and I feel like this is the first time that's happened. We we haven't watched Rebels or Resistance or anything like that. Right. But this is the first time we're seeing shit like that, and you have the beginning of uh, Revenge of the Sith happening pretty much concurrently with episodes, um, I'm sorry, episode, I'm doing math in my head, and it's really hard when I'm drinking. Revenge of the Sith. I just said that, idiot. I'm talking about uh, episode, what, what is it, four, eight, so nine and ten. I'm sorry, not episodes uh-huh. nine and ten of season seven of Clone Wars. Uh-huh. And it's happening concurrently. So you got the Battle of Coruscant, you have, um, uh, spoiler alert, well, not really, but um, uh, Anakin killing Count Dooku. Yes. And you you know, as a Star Wars fan who's been watching these movies, you know Order 66 is just knocking on the door. Uh-huh. And it's like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Um, yeah, like I said, one of the greatest things I saw was uh, it was a picture of like you know Rex, and the image of the uh, Emperor pops up. He goes, he's like, Commander Rex, it's time to initiate uh, Order sixty six, and Rex just goes, Yeah, fuck you, <laughs> and just hangs up on him. See, I don't know what's gonna, <laughs> I, I don't know what's gonna happen with that. Again, not watching Rebels, and obviously, you know, I'm I'm assuming that gets addressed then, but it. it looks like the way that this episode ends is that Ahsoka's just kind of being on Mandalore and uh-huh. none of the clones will be there. I hope, because that would just be, like, almost heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, but... If she, if she has to ice her clones. Exactly. Oh, man. Uh, but I, I feel like it, it's it's too juicy to not happen, and I'm, I'm very excited about I, um, I, uh, the rest of the season. I'm excited and scared and aroused at the same time. I'm, I'm up there with you, man. And I mean that in both I, ways. Yeah, just hard. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm fucking loving uh, at least the last couple of seasons, and and they're uh, I'm sorry episodes, and they're treating it so well. Like they have the Lucas Arts or Lucasfilm uh-huh. Limited intro. They have a different font, not font, but color to the whole thing. Like it, they they're treating it so well. Well, for these past two episodes, because I think these last two episodes were, like, special ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the Siege... Usually, you know, yeah. Yeah, canonically, the Siege of Mandalore is, like, the last battle of the Clone Wars. Right. So, this is this is it, man. Um, and, um, I, I know the production peoples have said that there probably will be more Clone Wars content in the future. Whatever that means. Sure. If there's going to be episodes or arcs sure, sure. or, or shorts or something like that, who knows. Um, but man, oh man, that is must-see watch for, uh, any Star Wars fans. Yeah. I agree 100%. Right. Uh, but yeah, Clone Wars, man, that's just, even now thinking about it, I'm like, damn. Oh, did you see the, um, so the three guys that Maul was talking to in that uh, one, in that one little bit via hologram? Right, yeah, they, yeah, they were, uh, Syndicate, uh. Right, but you know, you know who they right. were? No. So he was talking to the one dude with the Black Sun, uh, one dude with the Pike Syndicate, and the other guy was Dryden Voss from Solo. Oh, shit. Yeah, right? Ah, I totally missed that. Yeah, same. Because when I saw it, I was like, who the fuck was that third guy? And then I looked it up, and and that that was it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's great. That, yeah, wow. I totally missed that. Yeah, I mean, it's a blink and you miss it sort of thing, but it's also like, if you do see it, you're like, who the fuck was that? Because he doesn't, like, uh-huh. zoom in on his face or anything like that. Right, exactly. It's super well done. And it, it reminds me, actually, of, um, so, like, a brief, brief, brief clip in the first episode of this arc, so episode nine, um, you see a young, oh, fuck, I don't know the guy's name, but he's one of the Jedi in Rebels, uh-huh. who is presumably the last Padawan of the uh, Jedi Order. So you see you see like a brief clip of him. So it, it's a lot of marrying between uh, the Clone Wars and Rebels, which is super cool. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I missed that one. No, it's really good stuff. Um, cannot wait. Um, and I really hope it delivers and it ends pretty strongly. And yeah. I, I honestly also can't wait to get into Rebels once Clone Wars is wrapped. Right. And part of me wants this quarantine to keep on going, but 
Who knows? Oh, Jesus, no. Especially with Bat, especially with Batman coming up. Um. So Tom, let me uh, uh real quick what I've been up to. Yeah, real quick. Shut up. Um, <clears throat> I played some games, working on some uh-huh. games. Uh, Bonnie and I played through uh the new Supermassive game. Uh, Man of Medan, which is another uh, like choose your own adventure cinematic horror anthology game. Uh, it's a lot of ghost ship right. stuff. It's a lot of um, psychological horror stuff. Um, right. we, we played it. We beat it. Um, my thing between Man of Medan and a game like Until Dawn is that you see kind of like this game technically isn't better than Until Dawn because I think Supermassive wanted to go for you know a little more cheap and they're pumping out another game this year because they really want to get in like these the horror anthology. I think they kind of want to be the new Telltale and just kind of pump right. games out um, that are very cinematic. Um, it was fun. A pretty cool jump scares. I would dare say, because you could play five-player multiplayer on this game, right. this Rootober, this game, or the new game that they're going to come out with, we should all just you know, throw a controller to each other and just play as a character. Um, But we'll talk about that. We've got some months before we get in on that. Why do you want me to be... Why do you want to kill me with boredom? Shut up, fucking lame-o. Old man. Yeah, Yeah, jump scares. Yeah, no, it's fucking creepy shit. Whatever. Continue. Moving on. uh, (laughs) I beat... I beat my last Zelda game, too. Um, Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Um, I've got some thoughts on this. Uh, so Triforce Heroes, a multiplayer Zelda game that, man, if they just wanted to do fucking Four Swords, they should have just done that because, um, this game is such a half step from a, from trying to do a Zelda Zelda multiplayer game. Um, and it's just, it's not good. The most fun I did have with it, obviously the most fun I had was playing locally with you and your brother because we were able to laugh and yell at each other. But uh, I was playing online with randos, and we would pick a level, and you know they were good because they've played this game probably consistently, and it was good. It was refreshing because you're not playing with some fucking duds. But the Fuck thing you. is, no, you guys aren't duds. I'm saying, I, I'm saying sometimes when you play online, no. Well, I could have been, uh, but I'm saying like you know sometimes when you play online, you're like, oh, these guys are fucking, you know, this is babies for Zelda. Um, but no, it was good, and it was like, you know, they knew where the items were and shit, like, that's fine. Uh, but the the way that the game is set up, and you have to, like, basically randomly choose what level you want to play, and guess what? That random number generator could pick the same goddamn level you just fucking played. Uh, so there were points where I'm playing the same level three times in a row, uh, just to get material to make costumes? Like, no, I wasn't, I wasn't all about that. Um, so what I did, uh, but... Because of that whole level setup, I, in single player, was able to just go in, do the last level of each world, and then fight the boss, and beat the boss, and then beat the game, and now I'm done with the game. Um, so, it kind of worked for me in that favor, but, like, I'm not going to go back to this game and get items and material and shit like that, so no thank you. Right. Um, weakest Zelda game, I'll say. Potential weakest Zelda game, though. Uh, I'm also playing, because it's the 20th anniversary, I think I put on Instagram, uh, Metal Gear Solid for Game Boy Color. Uh, okay, yes. Also known as Metal Gear Ghost Babble. Um, right. This game is, I mean, to say like all Metal Gear Solid games are weird is one thing, but like this game um, doesn't follow the same continuity as the Metal Gear Solid game, so it's not like a sequel or anything like that. It's almost like a side story. It almost is like a sequel to uh, Metal Gear 2 which came out on the uh, MSX in Japan. Um, The game is really good. Like, technically, it is amazing what they were able to pull off on a Game Boy Color, or just a Game Boy for that matter, uh, with, like, the button layout and everything like that. But it's just so... It's so fucking hard. Like, they really want you to almost memorize where the layout... like, Like, the layout of the levels. So you know, like, okay, this door is locked. I have to go find a... A key card and go get that or I have to go find the rocket launcher with the remote control rockets and you know shoot it in this room and blow up the power panel on that like it's really tough I've been using a walkthrough because like I'm just like I kind of want to just play it I don't want to I don't want to be challenged 
Uh, but it, it's so, it's, it's really good. It's amazing on how well they made it. Um, but, you know, I think I'm almost done. And again, I wanted to play it for the 20th anniversary. And it's a really good game. Really good game. It's just, like, not for me. Um, but it's enjoyable. It sounds like you're playing a lot of games that aren't for you. I mean, I'm still, I'm still playing Animal Crossing and Breath of the Wild, and I'm having a good time with that. I'm gearing right. up for Batman, gearing up for Arkham Asylum. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm kind of, like, just playing these little stopgap games to, you know... Right. Just, just kind of build me up. Fill and that gap. Fill that gap. And, um, the last thing I'll talk about real quick is Spider-Man City at War. Real quick. Fuck off. Uh-huh. Spider-Man oh, City the, at War. Uh, DLC? No, no, no. Well, well, City at War, this is uh, this is the graphic novel adaptation to Marvel's Spider-Man, the uh, PS4 game. Right. And um, okay. it's, it's kind of a good, like, I don't even want to say, like, side story, because it really just takes the plot of the game and just puts it in graphic novel form. Uh, so you get, obviously, sure. a lot of the main plot points, like the... Um, uh, you know, the fight with Kingpin and um, Doc Ock uh, releasing the um, the gas and, you know, the Sinister Six and all that other shit. Um, what I like about it is that, because I think it's about six issues, each issue or the first five issues take place from a different person's perspective. So, like, you know, Spider-Man's is one, Miles Morales is another, Mary Jane and um, Otto Octavius. Uh, there might have actually just been five episodes, uh, issues, I'm sorry. But um, it's it's a cool little like read just to kind of like f- I, I guess just get a little more lore in the game. Uh-huh. Uh, I know they're building this up more. Um, there's a um, Spider-Man Velocity, which talks about Spider-Man fighting Swarm, and this all takes place within that universe. Okay. Um, and I believe there's a one. There's also another story with Black Cat. I don't know if that's going to adapt the DLC that the game saw, uh, but I think that's kind of like being released now. So. Uh, something to take a look at if you're into that whole Spider-Man PS4 uh, universe, I suppose. <clears throat> sure. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. And now that's all I've been up to. It's gonna be Batman. Yeah, you like that, right? Uh, yeah, so, no, no, um, so Tommy, so Chrissy, uh, for a couple of years I've been doing a replay May, uh-huh. which I don't think I need to beat this horse anymore, but I will, um, it's, I it, it's just a game, I, li- I like to replay games that, um, I like, uh, in the month of May, but the caveat has to be, I have to work the word May into the title. So, um, right. you know, Bayonetta became Mayonetta, uh, right. Castlevania became Castlemania, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this month, though, we are incorporating the Rude Nation, the Rude Boys Power Hour Plus, um, the Rude Cast, all the Rude Boys Podcast Network things, and Tommy. Tommy's coming along for the ride. I know. This and, is my first year doing it. I know. And we're doing Batman. So, what that is going to um, entail is we are both going to replay Batman Arkham Asylum, uh, which is the first in the Arkham, uh, I don't want to even say trilogy, because you've got to inca- uh, put into consideration Origins. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but Batman Arkham Asylum, I'm super excited for I, I am too. I, I, yeah. I mean, this has been one of my like all-time favorite games no. uh, series for a long time. I agree, and it, it's super well done. Super duper well done. Um, Tom, did you play this game before me? I forget. And did you yeah, tell me about the game? Uh, I played it. I don't know if it was before you. I know one of us told the other. I forget how uh, that worked out. You probably yeah, played it first. Might, probably, because, yeah, you've... You've had a lot more of a life than I have, so. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have bought. Fuck you. No, I'm saying I wouldn't have bought a Batman game because, like, like, oh yeah, Batman game, you know, like I, someone probably should have pushed me to play it, and I feel like that might have been you. So we got that coming down. Batman, Arkham Asylum, um, which have you? You haven't touched that game since, right? Since you first played it. That 
that is correct. I tried to get one of our buddies to play, and it sat in his room for a year and a half. That's a shame, so man. Like, it's right, it's such a good game. game. It's such a good game. Yeah. Um, but it really is. So, Nation, if you want to play along with us, um, we are going to obviously start this Friday on the 1st. That is a Friday, right? Pretty sure. Yes. Yes. This Friday on the 1st, um, I might attempt to stream a co- maybe like an hour's worth. Um, nice. Tom, Tom will be in on, uh, you know, we'll, you watch our social medias, we will get into us playing Batman. Um, I don't know if we're going to have uh-huh. break, I don't know if we're going to have breaking points, Tom. We can maybe like both pause and then we'll recap or something like that. I think we're just going to play the fucking game. You're going to probably get a lot further than me on Friday, so. Th- this is probably true because you'll be a tired boy because you're a central worker. All right. Uh, a tired boy. Yeah, that is true. Um, so we got that coming down. We also, Nation, uh, because we want to celebrate Batman this entire month coming up, uh, we are opening up our next episode of Rude Boys Go to the Movies to you. So on Twitter, we're going to... I'll put this poll out on Wednesday, so the day after this episode goes live. We're going to ask you, Nation what you want to see or hear us roast or whatever. Because this wholly original idea of people talking through a movie um, that, you know, we still got the patent out, you know, it, it's in the mail. Um, we're going to talk through a Batman movie specifically. So um, we'll, 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 we'll announce our movies uh, right now. So the movies that you guys can choose us, choose us, Choose for us? I don't know. Um, so we got Batman 66, the Adam West classic. Uh-huh. Tom, what else we got on the list? Batman Returns. Batman Returns. One, I, I think my favorite... My favorite Batman movie. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Which I've never seen. Neither have I. And I, I think having the whole Batman animated uh, series team uh, will go pretty well with um, the Arkham series. I agree. N- not to sway the Rude Nation. I, not to sway them. And our final movie will be uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. Ooh, you called the Audible. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Batman Under the Red Hood. Well, no, 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 I didn't. No, you didn't. Where's, I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're past that. Uh, but Batman Under the Red Hood, Tom, funny you should mention that. Under the Red Hood, potentially Joker, happy 80th yeah. birthday to the Joker. Happy 80th birthday yeah. to Batman number one, which featured the Joker and also featured Catwoman. So, happy birthday, y'all. Happy birthday, a perfect, Mr. President. A perfect segue into Batman. Um, something else we're going to do during the month, the great month of Batman, is on our Facebook, specifically, we're going to hold a poll, and we're going to determine what's the best Batmobile. So, I mean, you've got classics such as the Tim Burton one, the uh, Adam West one, the Batman animated series one, even if you want to do the Tumblr, like, there's some iconic Batmobiles out there, and we're going to get to the bottom of it, which one's the best. best. Which one's the best, exactly. Other than that, just keep a lookout on our social medias for more Batman stuff. Um, I know... uh, Specifically Arkham Asylum stuff. Well, yeah, specifically Arkham Asylum, because that's the main event of Batman, I think. Everything else is supplemental. Um, uh-huh. I would have loved to maybe do another trading the backs, but I don't have any Batman books to trade you, so, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep, I got a lot. Yeah, okay, that's <laughs> fine. Um, but Nation, you're gonna, you're gonna hear a lot of Batman stuff coming up. We did a Batman episode, so don't get it fucking twisted. This is more Batman stuff, alright? Batman, alright? Again, if you wanna follow along... You follow on our social media accounts, you let us know, you reply to us, you chime in, you tweet us, you fucking Facebook message us, you DM, you slide into Tommy's DMs, ladies, alright? And you just, let's talk about Batman, alright? Let's celebrate Batman. Little, little DMX being 
being little DMX right now. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I think on that note, Tom, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, and more technical difficulties. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Um, so Nation, thanks for thanks for um, sitting with us. We got Batman, Batman to look forward to. I'm excited. I really can't wait because yeah, Nation. Um, so we're replaying Batman Arkham Asylum. We're both doing it on the what is it? Return to Arkham Collection? Is that what it's called, Tom? Yes. Okay, yeah. we're both doing it on the disc. Return to Arkham Collection. Make sure you get your downloads in, your updates in. All that jazz. I'm fairly confident it's on sale on both the PSN store and the, I guess, the game store on Xbox or something like that. Um, yeah, because I think it's like the anniversary. Exactly, yeah. Uh, it came out for PS3 and P- uh, Xbox 360. Find yourselves a copy. This game is fantastic. Still one of the best comic book video games out there. Play along with us, all right? This would be a lot of fun. I think it's just going to be Tom and me. Like let's 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 not be front about it. Um, if anyone else wants to play, great. I would welcome it. Uh, yes, please. Like, yes. Come on, we're pissing in the wind here. Right. Exactly. Um, so definitely do that. Definitely follow along with our Batman stuff for the month of May. Batman. Um, speaking of, well, not really speaking of Batman, but speaking of the Rude Boys Power Hour Plus, or the Rude Cast, or the whatever we want to talk about, uh, we are on the brink of 3,000 downloads, so thank you, Rude Nation. Um, you'll hear updates from us. We are also, episode 75, if everything goes as planned and as scheduled, that'll be our 100th unique episode out there in the internet. So we'll have something wow, planned for that. Wowie. Yeah, right? Uh, and that almost pretty much leads us into our third anniversary episode. So we've got things working, all right? It's Batman this month coming up. And then it's all it's, it's Rude Boys. We're going to take care of you, okay? We're going to talk about Batman. We're going to come around, reach around, whisper in your ear. We're going to talk about Batman. <sighs> Batman. We're going to do that in your ear. Na, 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 na. I got Tom Hard. I'm sorry. Wouldn't be the first time. Um, uh, so, Nation, again, uh, thank you so much for joining us. The If you want to follow along on our social medias or anything, our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, our YouTube, our Podbean, our Apple Podcasts, our Stitcher, our Google Podcasts, which I was able to find that link, all of those things can be found on the link L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash rude boys you hit that link you get access to all of our shit all of it it's out there take all of our shit exactly um cause we put out so much shit yeah this is true um but if you want to find us specifically it's uh, rude boys 469 check that out on any of your social medias you'll find us don't you worry like us subscribe to us do all that shit um our youtube tommy we have a youtube yep that is over at a uh, all lowercase bit.ly forward slash rude boys rude tube and if big if but probably like a little if uh i personally do any streaming That'll be where you find it. All right. Nice. Yep. So that'll be there. Check it out. Probably Friday night, I'd imagine, would be some Batman Arkham Asylum stuff. Get ready for some intro. Get ready for some tutorials, some prologues. Get ready for all that fun video game stuff. Can't wait. Um, Can't wait to watch it as I play it. Yeah, right? Uh, but that's it for me. You got anything, Tommy? Well, Chris, where, did you say where uh, the nation can reach you on social media? I or didn't I because, like, I, I feel like I talked a lot, but uh, it's at Tesh Arms, T E H T E H underscore S H. Yeah, there you go. You want to keep talking over me or what? <laughs> Continue, please. T E H underscore S H E R M S. On you Twitter, expecting me to talk over you. I kind of was, hence the hence the pregnant pauses. <laughs> I know. 
Tommy, where can they reach you? Sorry, I was drinking. <laughs> they can get me on Instagram and on Twitter at Tommy underscore cash. And that's cash with a K. Oh, that's the same name on both social medias? Uh, actually, Instagram uh... is 80. Tommy underscore cash 80. I think you just change it for the branding, and Tom. For the for the specific Tommy Cash branding? I can't. Really? It, I can't, Yeah. I feel like you'd, pro- you'd probably just change your Twitter. That'd probably be easier. Yeah, you don't care. You don't tweet probably. anyway. You don't tweet anyway. It's fine. I do. Uh, when I want to get banned from Twitter pages. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, Tom's got a knack for getting blocked and banned. <laughs> I have a reputation. And you know what? You have a reputation. So. You got to keep going on. So. Exactly. Anywho, um, that's it. Nation, get ready for Batman. I'm excited. Tommy's excited. Uh, I know Bonnie's going to be excited because she's going to be sitting with us doing all this bullshit. So I can feel the eye rolls. Yep. Um, so thank you, thank you, Nation. Um, that's all I got. All right. That's all I got. Na 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 na. Rude boys. This has been a presentation of the Rude Boys Podcast Network. Um. Oops.